Hello there and welcome to this video review of the Oliver Twins collection for the Evercade. Now I haven't actually featured the Evercade on my channel yet, but I bought one recently and while the hardware itself has been excellent, the quality of the games on the four cartridges I've bought so far has been very mixed, with the majority being pretty poor in reality. But I must say, I've got this new cartridge in my Evercade and I can't see anything taking its place soon. This is really good. It's a collection of 11 8-bit titles from the minds of Philip and Andrew Oliver. I've actually met them both in person in the past and they are very gracious when fielding questions about work they did in their teens because they're still active now with new things to do, new IPs. But I have to say this package is one of the loveliest celebrations of any developing team's work. Not quite as spectacular as Rare Replay on Xbox One, but certainly a treasure trove for any fans. The games here are essentially NES quality and many of these games did appear on Nintendo's breakthrough home console. The Oliver Twins' first ZX Spectrum game, Super Robin Hood, is supremely playable in its NES incarnation with some really nice, forgiving collision detection on the edge of platforms, a smooth frame rate and pleasantly chunky visuals. I really like this one, in fact a lot more than the ZX Spectrum version which I do also happen to own. There's also BMX Simulator which was another massive hit for the duo on the Spectrum. While it didn't achieve quite such massive success on the NES, this version is nonetheless smooth moving and with impressive animations when your rider inevitably takes a tumble. It's very difficult, but when a game is as simple as this in terms of its mechanics and scope, the game's longevity is all in mastering its controls and this is clearly quite the challenge. Perfect for occasional bursts of handheld play on Evercade. We'll come to Dizzy momentarily, but it's also worth mentioning Firehawk, which is unlike most of the duo's usual output. In this Desert Strike-esque shooter, you pilot a helicopter from above, shooting at tanks and silos with missiles or chain gun fire. You also have to pick up an agent, which gives you an arcadey little mini-game where you must tap the left or right attack buttons to shoot down the enemy fighters behind you while the helicopter lifts the agent to safety. Again, it's simple but very playable and I'm keen to play this one more. But this cartridge is most notable for its unreleased content. A few years ago, a lot of unpublished code was found by Philip Oliver in his loft and Dreamworld Pogi was among the games in there. This game stars Pogi the Fluffle, who I remember could be seen running around the Yoke Folks treehouse village in the Mega Drive version of Fantastic Dizzy. You had to catch him in a small cage in that game, but here he is running free in a very pleasant 2D platformer with vivid, colourful visuals full of collectible stars and power-ups. This game also appeared on the ZX Spectrum Next as a pack-in game, but it's great to have it here with Evercade's chunky D-pad and face buttons to control it properly. Also in this loft of treasures was the previously unreleased Dizzy game, which was intended to be a conversion of Magic Land Dizzy for the home consoles of the time. It was completed by the Dizzy fan community a couple of years ago, and now it sits very nicely in this collection alongside Panic Dizzy, which isn't actually the game of the same name from Spectrum, but rather five Dizzy-themed puzzle games. And so we come to Dizzy, the egg himself, who is synonymous with the twins some 33 years or so since the first Dizzy game. He's a massive part of many gamers' childhoods, including mine. So it's an absolute pleasure to have the NES version of Treasure Island Dizzy on this collection. A pleasure for several reasons. Firstly, it's one of my all-time favourite games. Secondly, while ostensibly the same game as the Spectrum Classic, there are some new items like the pogo stick, as well as new locations for the 30 coins, which means playing it again now is going to take a little relearning, which is absolutely fine by me. Thirdly, it's also somehow still got the atmosphere of the ZX Spectrum original, which is impressive considering there's much more detail in the graphics here. I firmly believe the black backgrounds of the Spectrum games made your imagination fill in many of the gaps, but with the music here sounding so similar to the 128K version and the single screen at a time gameplay being so faithful to the original, this version just feels deluxe rather than hampered by the switch to different hardware. It's really, really good and I'm very much enjoying it. In terms of the Evercade's capabilities, all of the games on this package run really well and seem to maintain their original frame rates. So some games seem to run at a solid but low refresh rate, while others are clearly running at a lovely 60 frames per second. There's very little input lag on the controls, so whatever emulator is being used here is running very nicely on the Evercade. 
It's fair to say, however, that the 8-bit visuals look great on the Evercade's small screen. Besides Treasure Island Dizzy, there are several other full-length Dizzy adventures to enjoy, though I do feel the decision to stick to NES versions is an odd one. The Evercade could certainly have handled the Mega Drive version of Fantastic Dizzy with aplomb, yet is absent here, and I would have loved to see the ZX Spectrum classics like Fantasy World Dizzy and Magic Land Dizzy, or even the original Dizzy game featured here in their original incarnations. But no matter, any Dizzy fan will likely have those anyway in some form, and the fact remains that this collection is supremely playable. In fact, I go so far as to say that this is the most playable of all the Evercade collections available to date. Whether you want an arcadey fix of shooting action, some long-tailed adventuring, or some action puzzling that's perfect for handheld play, there's something here for any occasion. It also all benefits massively from the save state functionality of Evercade. I can't imagine the horror of blowing yourself up by placing the detonator before the dynamite in Treasure Island Dizzy if you didn't have a save file on the go. But in this climate, such a harsh game is still enjoyable now thanks to the modern quality of life enhancements. And frankly, I don't think I'll be taking this cartridge out of my Evercade very much until someone like Sega decides to get involved. There's also the other noteworthy element of any Evercade release, and that's the instruction manual. Or I say instruction manual, but it's more like a little celebration of every game, beautifully produced in full colour and explaining what you're seeing and playing. It really is a joy to read through it, and it does bring back nostalgic memories of reading the inserts from ZX Spectrum games in the car on the way home before actually playing the latest Dizzy game. I really like Evercade's little booklets, and this one is lovely. So, it's clearly an excellent package. I must say, I don't believe in egg puns, so you're not going to get one out of me here. But there's one more awesome thing that I need to touch on. All the profits from this collection are going to the National Video Game Museum in Sheffield. It's just further proof that the Oliver Twins are just lovely people. And although I'm not in the business of reviewing people, I think these two would get my wholehearted recommendation. But seriously, if I could only keep one Evercade cartridge, much as I love playing Mappy and Dig Dug 2 on the two Namco collections, this is the one I would choose. I really like it. So I give the Oliver Twins collection for Evercade a very well-deserved four stars. Lovely stuff. Well, that's all for this video. Please do check out my other gaming videos, as there's loads on here for retro gaming fans, as well as modern releases too, as the next generation launches. You can hear more about the Atomos Ninja 5 capture rig here if you're interested, and you can hear about my recent music album. There's a playlist for that here too. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Cheers.